Good day everyone, this is Suawi Alingay. Today we will talk about the historic sites and landmarks in the Philippines by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. Before talking about the uh, historic sites and landmarks of the Philippines, let's talk about what is historic site and landmarks. It's an official location where pieces of political, military, cultural, or social history have been preserved due to their cultural heritage value, usually protected by law and many been recognized with the official National Historic Site status. It is a place where people showing their interest for natural resources and human-made, which is protected by the law and preserved by the, uh, the organizations or any org organizations connected by the heritage or the site. It is being protected and preserved by the any organizations because of its val value, because of its importance, and because of how it become, became part of the Philippine history. Let's also talk about the Historical Commission of the Philippines. As an arm in the culture and development agenda of the government, envisions a Filipino society with citizens informed of their history who love their country and proud of their cultural heritage. Um, the National Historical Commission of the Philippines wants us to see the beauty of our Philippines and wants us to see the, the establishments or the man-made or natural resources that we still have in present and they also want us to be informed or being knowledgeable enough of the the places or landmarks that we can still have we can still have the chance to go or we can still have the chance to to see and experience a place the NHCP mission is the promotion of Philippine history and culture heritage through research, dissemination, conservation, site management, and heraldry works. Their mission is to promote the existing landmarks and historic sites that we, the Philippines still have or um, the man-made uh, like Intramuros or also the natural resources that we can have as Filipinos. So now we have the first example of our historic sites and landmarks in the Philippines. We have Intramuros. Plays an important part to our country's history and it is one of the popular destinations for the visitor to our hometown. It is the oldest district and called the World City. Historically, it is the seat and the Spanish government when they colonized the Philippines. It plays important part of our country's history or in the Philippines because ito ay isa sa pinakatanyag o kilalad na lugar dito sa ating bansa. It also have big part uh, in the history of the Philippines since Intramuros became the Spanish government place or it is their location the time when they colonized the Philippines. Good afternoon everyone, I am Alizan Aiko. In American period, the double moats that surrounded Intramuros were deep, unsanitary, and were filled in with mud dredged from Manila Bay, where the present port of Manila is now located. The moats were transformed into a municipal golf course by the city. In American period, the Americans made a lot of changes in the city, such as in 1903, when the walls from the Santo Domingo Gate up to the Almacens Gate were removed as a wall on the southern bank of the Pasig River was improved. The stones removed were used for other constructions happening around the city. The walls were also reached in four areas to ease access to the city. And in World War II and Japanese occupation, the first casualties in intramuros brought by the war were the destruction of Santo Domingo Church in the original University of Santo Tomas campus during an assault. Two of the eight gates of intramuros were badly damaged by American tanks. The bombing leveled most of the intramuros, leaving only 5% of the city structures. The walls lost 
40% to the bombing. So, as the battle continued, both sides inflicted heavy damage on the city, culminating with the Manila massacre by Japanese troops. Though opposed to the bombing of the walled city, approved the heavy shelling, which resulted in death of over 6,665 Japanese alone within Intramuros. Tungod sa gera sa World War II, dagan mga changes na hitabo sa Intramuros kay dagan man nga damage, especially all the buildings and structures in Intramuros were destroyed, with only the damage of San Agustin Church are still standing. So dagan man changes na hitabo sa Intramuros during during the American rule, yet everything was ultimately reduced to rubble during the Manila battle at the end of the World War II, and the San Agustin na Judbia ang napabilin. But other landmarks and establishments have seen been restored. In contemporary period, 1946 or the present, in 1979, the Intramuros Administration or the IA was created by virtue of Presidential Degree Number 1616, signed by President Ferdinand Marcos on April 10 of that year. The IA has been slowly restoring the wall, the sub-features of the for fortification and the city within. The remaining five original gates have been restored or rebuilt. Isabel II Gate, Perian Gate, Real Gate, Santa Lucia Gate, and the Postigo Gate. The entrance made by the American by breaching the walls at four locations are now spanned walkways thereby creating a connection seamless in design and character to the original walls. So in contemporary period or the present, takay na hinay nagkabalik ang mga ang Intramuros from a heavy nga nahitabo from the World War II. Intramuros is the only district of Manila where old Spanish era influences are still plentiful. Fort Santiago is now well maintained park and popular tourist destination adjacent to Fort Santiago is is the reconstructed Maestranza Wall, which was removed by the Americans in 1903 to widen the warp's dust, opening the city to the Pasig River. The evolution of the Intramuros today it stands as the symbolic heart of the Manila, as a, and as in the case in historic cities, it is the part of a living, evolving heritage, thus it has had to deal with a wide range of issues that involve heritage conversation, public awareness, and cultural tourism, among others. And that would be all. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am John S. Aparicio, the next reporter. Buildings destroyed during the war were subsequently rebuilt, like the Manila Cathedral, which is famous in our country, it was rebuilt and was opened to the public in 1958. Also, the Ayuntamiento de Manila was rebuilt in 2013, while the San Ignacio Church and Convent is currently being reconstructed as the Museo de Intramuros. <laughs> Preservation, adapting Spanish colonial type of architecture and all buildings to be constructed, alter, altered or repaired in Intramuros. So that's the way how they preserve the Intramuros to be look beautiful and maintain the ambience of the historic sites. An act to declare Fort Santiago a national shrine and to provide for the preservation of historical monuments in the walled city of Manila. So that's um, the caretaker of that place is that's the way how they handle and maintain the intramuros to be more useful in many years and to be used in the next generation. And this is the appearance of the Malacanang Palace, the before and after. So before, as you can see, the streets are different and in the before and after in the current situation of the Malacanang Palace has different structure it was built and also the wide space around it so Malacanang Palace is the official residence and principal workplace of the president of the Philippines so this is where the president work um, meetings and 
seminars are held there for the issues of the Philippines and other important matters. It is located in the Manila district of San Miguel and is commonly associated with Minjola Street. So the term Malacanang is often used as a minute metonym for the president and his advisor so what metonym means so a metonym is a name a word or an expression uh, used as substitute for something else which is closely associated spanish colonial era malacanang palace was originally built as caseta or country house in 1750 made of adult wood with interiors panel with finest nara and mulabi so that's the malacanang palace made of a wood um not wood nara nara tree and the mulabi so these um materials are very um, um good for the use of making a building that's end of my report and thank you for listening. So the next reporter is Miss Alabe. American colonial rule. They and subsequent governors general continued to improve and enlarge the palace, buying more land and reclaiming more of the Pasig River. Left and right wings were added. A staircase was transferred to the center of the foyer with galleries built around the stairway where the public could circulate during crowded receptions. The ground floor was raised above the flood line, replacing wood and concrete and beautifying the interiors. Commonwealth era. The complex became the official residence of the President of the Philippines upon the establishment of the Commonwealth of the Philippines on November 15, 1935. Later years, the palace was expanded with the facades from all sides moved forward. The presidential quarters were enlarged in the front along J.P. Laurel Street, destroying the small garden and driveway leading to the private entrance. While a new dining room and expanded guest suites were built in the main entrance front. On the side facing the river, the ceremonial hall was built to the replace the Azotias Veranda and Pavilion. A larger presidential bedroom was constructed on the remaining side, with a disco at roof level. The layout of the old rooms was sustained, although the rooms themselves were enlarged and new. So during the rule of American colonial, the American colonies were the British colonies that were established during the 17th and early 18th centuries in what is now part of the Eastern United States. And the colonies grew both geographically along the Atlantic coast and westward and numerically to the 13th from the time of their funding on, during the American colonials. And, uh, and it is also carried out in the name of promoting self-government. And in Commonwealth era, in November 15, 1935, it is when the Commonwealth of the Philippines established and became the residential of the president during that time, during that year, during that era. And so this is the photo of the palace that was renovated. This is called the Ceremonial Hall that rebuilt to replace the Azotias, Veranda, and the Pavilion.